Book twenty three of the Iliad by Homer, translated by Alexander Pope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book twenty three Argument Funeral Games in Honor of Patroclus. Achilles and the Myrmidons do honors to the body of Patroclus. After the funeral feast, he retires to the seashore where, falling asleep, the ghost of his friend appears to him and demands the rites of burial the next morning the soldiers are sent with mules and wagons to fetch wood for the pyre the funeral procession and the offering their hair to the dead achilles sacrifices several animals and lastly twelve trojan captives at the pile then sets fire to it he pays libations to the winds which at the instance of iris rise and raise the flames when the pile has burned all night they gather the bones place them in an urn of gold and raise the tomb achilles institutes the funeral games the chariot race the fight of the cestus the wrestling the foot race the single combat the discus the shooting with arrows the darting the javelin the various descriptions of which and the various success of the several antagonists make the greatest part of the book in this book ends the thirtieth day the night following the ghost of patroclus appears to achilles the one and thirtieth day is employed in felling the timber for the pile the two and thirtieth in burning it and the three and thirtieth in the games the scene is generally on the seashore thus humbled in the dust the pensive train through the sad city mourned her hero slain the body soiled with dust and black with gore lies on broad hellespont's resounding shore the grecians seek their ships and clear the strand all but the martial myrmidonian band these yet assembled great achilles holds and the stern purpose of his mind unfolds not yet my brave companions of the war release your smoking coursers from the car but with his chariot each in order led perform due honours to patroclus dead ere yet from rest or food we seek relief some rites remain to glut our rage of grief the troops obeyed and thrice in order led achilles first their coursers round the dead and thrice their sorrows and laments renew tears bathe their arms and tears the sands bedew for such a warrior thetis aids their woe melts their strong hearts and bids their eyes to flow but chief polites thick succeeding sighs burst from his heart and torrents from his eyes his slaughtering hands yet red with blood he laid on his dead friend's cold breast and thus he said all hail patroclus let thy honoured ghost hear and rejoice on pluto's dreary coast behold achilles promise is complete the bloody hector stretched before thy feet lo to the dogs his carcass i resign and twelve sad victims of the trojan line sacred to vengeance instant shall expire their lives effused around thy funeral pyre gloomy he said and horrible to view before the bier the bleeding hector threw prone on the dust the myrmidons around unbraced their armor and the steeds unbound all to achilles sable ship repair frequent and full the genial feast to share now from the well-fed swine black smokes aspire the bristly victims hissing o'er the fire the huge ox bellowing falls with feebler cries expires the goat the sheep in silence dies around the hero's prostrate body flowed in one promiscuous stream the reeking blood and now a band of argive monarchs brings the glorious victor to the king of kings from his dead friend the pensive warrior went with steps unwilling to the regal tent the attending heralds as by office bound with kindled flames the tripod vase surround to cleanse his conquering hands from hostile gore they urged in vain the chief refused and swore no drop shall touch me by almighty jove the first and greatest of the gods above till on the pyre i place thee till i rear the grassy mound and clip thy sacred hair some ease at least those pious rites may give and soothe my sorrows while i bear to live howe'er reluctant as i am i stay and share your feast but with the dawn of day o king of men it claims thy royal care that greece the warrior's funeral pile prepare and bid the forests fall such rites are paid to heroes slumbering in eternal shade then when his earthly part shall mount in fire let the leagued squadrons to their posts retire he spoke they hear him and the word obey the rage of hunger and of thirst allay then ease in sleep the labours of the day 
but great pelides stretched along the shore where dashed on rocks the broken billows roar lies inly groaning while on either hand the martial myrmidons confusedly stand along the grass his languid members fall tired with his chase around the trojan wall hushed by the murmurs of the rolling deep at length he sinks in the soft arms of sleep when lo the shade before his closing eyes of sad patroclus rose or seemed to rise in the same robe he living wore he came in stature voice and pleasing look the same the form familiar hovered o'er his head and sleeps achilles thus the phantom said sleeps my achilles his patroclus dead living i seemed his dearest tenderest care but now forgot i wander in the air let my pale course the rites of burial know and give me entrance in the realms below till then the spirit finds no resting-place but here and there the unbodied spectres chase the vagrant dead around the dark abode forbid to cross the irremeable flood now give thy hand for to the farther shore when once we pass the soul returns no more when once the last funereal flames ascend no more shall meet achilles and his friend no more our thoughts to those we loved make known or quit the dearest to converse alone me fate has severed from the sons of earth the fate foredoomed that waited from my birth thee too it waits before the trojan wall even great and godlike thou art doomed to fall here then and as in fate and love we join ah suffer that my bones may rest with thine together have we lived together bred one house received us and one table fed that golden urn thy goddess mother gave may mix our ashes in one common grave and is it thou he answers to my sight once more returnst thou from the realms of night o oh, more than brother think each office paid what e'er can rest a discontented shade but grant one last embrace unhappy boy afford at least that melancholy joy he said and with his longing arms essayed in vain to grasp the visionary shade like a thin smoke he sees the spirit fly and hears a feeble lamentable cry confused he wakes amazement breaks the bands of golden sleep and starting from the sands pensive he muses with uplifted hands tis true tis certain man though dead retains part of himself the immortal mind remains the form subsists without the body's aid aerial semblance and an empty shade this night my friend so late in battle lost stood at my side a pensive plaintive ghost even now familiar as in life he came alas how different yet how like the same thus while he spoke each eye grew big with tears and now the rosy-fingered morn appears shows every mournful face with tears o'erspread and glares on the pale visage of the dead but agamemnon as the rites demand with mules and wagons sends a chosen band to load the timber and the pile to rear a charge consigned to merion's faithful care with proper instruments they take the road axes to cut and ropes to sling the load first march the heavy mules securely slow o'er hills or dales or crags or rocks they go jumping high o'er the shrubs of the rough ground rattle the clattering cars and the shocked axles bound but when arrived at ida's spreading woods fair ida watered with descending floods loud sounds the axe redoubling strokes on strokes on all sides round the forest hurls her oaks headlong deep echoing groan the thickets brown then rustling crackling crashing thunder down the wood the grecians cleave prepared to burn and the slow mules the same rough road return the sturdy woodmen equal burdens bore such charge was given them to the sandy shore there on the spot which great achilles showed they eased their shoulders and disposed the load circling around the place where times to come shall view patroclus and achilles tomb the hero bids his martial troops appear high on their cars in all the pomp of war each in refulgent arms his limbs attires all mount their chariots combatants and squires the chariots first proceed a shining train then clouds of foot that smoke along the plain next these the melancholy band appear amidst lay dead patroclus on the bier o'er all the course their scattered locks they throw achilles next oppressed with mighty woe supporting with his hands the hero's head bends o'er the extended body of the dead 
patroclus decent on the appointed ground they place and heap the sylvan pile around but great achilles stands apart in prayer and from his head divides the yellow hair those curling locks which from his youth he vowed and sacred grew to spercheus honoured flood then sighing to the deep his locks he cast and rolled his eyes around the watery waste spercheus whose waves in mazy errors lost delightful roll along my native coast to whom we vainly vowed at our return these locks to fall and hecatombs to burn full fifty rams to bleed in sacrifice where to the day thy silver fountains rise and where in shade of consecrated bowers thy altars stand perfumed with native flowers so vowed my father but he vowed in vain no more achilles sees his native plain in that vain hope these hairs no longer grow patroclus bears them to the shades below thus o'er patroclus while the hero prayed on his cold hand the sacred lock he laid once more afresh the grecian sorrows flow and now the sun had set upon their woe but to the king of men thus spoke the chief enough atrides give the troops relief permit the mourning legions to retire and let the chiefs alone attend the pyre the pious care be ours the dead to burn he said the people to their ships return while those deputed to inter the slain heap with a rising pyramid the plain a hundred foot in length a hundred wide the growing structure spreads on every side high on the top the manly course they lay and well-fed sheep and sable oxen slay achilles covered with their fat the dead and the piled victims round the body spread then jars of honey and of fragrant oil suspends around low bending o'er the pile four sprightly coursers with a deadly groan pour forth their lives and on the pyre are thrown of nine large dogs domestic at his board fall two selected to attend their lord then last of all and horrible to tell sad sacrifice twelve trojan captives fell on these the rage of fire victorious praise involves and joins them in one common blaze smeared with the bloody rites he stands on high and calls the spirit with a dreadful cry all hail patroclus let thy vengeful ghost hear and exult on pluto's dreary coast behold achilles promise fully paid twelve trojan heroes offered to thy shade but heavier fates on hector's course attend saved from the flames for hungry dogs to rend so spake he threatening but the gods made vain his threat and guard inviolate the slain celestial venus hovered o'er his head and roseate unguents heavenly fragrance shed she watched him all the night and all the day and drove the bloodhounds from their destined prey nor sacred phoebus less employed his care he poured around a veil of gathered air and kept the nerves undried the flesh entire against the solar beam and syrian fire nor yet the pile where dead patroclus lies smokes nor as yet the sullen flames arise but fast beside achilles stood in prayer invoked the gods whose spirit moves the air and victims promised and libations cast to gentle zephyr and the boreal blast he called the aerial powers along the skies to breathe and whisper to the fires to rise the winged iris heard the hero's call and instant hastened to their airy hall where in old zephyr's open courts on high sat all the blustering brethren of the sky she shone amidst them on her painted bow the rocky pavement glittered with the show all from the banquet rise and each invites the various goddess to partake the rites not so the dame replied i haste to go to sacred ocean and the floods below even now our solemn hecatombs attend and heaven is feasting on the world's green end with righteous ethiops uncorrupted train far on the extremest limits of the main but peleus son entreats with sacrifice the western spirit and the north to rise let on patroclus pile your blast be driven and bear the blazing honours high to heaven swift as the word she vanished from their view swift as the word the winds tumultuous flew forth burst the stormy band with thundering roar and heaps on heaps the clouds are tossed before to the wide main then stooping from the skies the heaving deeps in watery mountains rise troy feels the blast along her shaking walls till on the pile the gathered tempest falls the structure crackles in the roaring fires and all the night the plenteous flame aspires 
all night achilles hails patroclus soul with large libations from the golden bowl as a poor father helpless and undone mourns o'er the ashes of an only son takes a sad pleasure the last bones to burn and pours in tears ere yet they close the urn so stayed achilles circling round the shore so watched the flames till now they flame no more twas when emerging through the shades of night the morning planet told the approach of light and fast behind aurora's warmer ray o'er the broad ocean poured the golden day then sank the blaze the pile no longer burned and to their caves the whistling winds returned across the thracian seas their course they bore the ruffled seas beneath their passage roar then parting from the pile he ceased to weep and sank to quiet in the embrace of sleep exhausted with his grief meanwhile the crowd of thronging grecians round achilles stood the tumult waked him from his eyes he shook unwilling slumber and the chiefs bespoke ye kings and princes of the achaean name first let us quench the yet remaining flame with sable wine then as the rites direct the hero's bones with careful view select apart and easy to be known they lie amidst the heap and obvious to the eye the rest around the margin will be seen promiscuous steeds and immolated men these wrapped in double calls of fat prepare and in the golden vase dispose with care there let them rest with decent honour laid till i shall follow to the infernal shade meantime erect the tomb with pious hands a common structure on the humble sands hereafter greece some nobler work may raise and late posterity record our praise the greeks obey where yet the embers glow wide o'er the pile the sable wine they throw and deep subsides the ashy heap below next the white bones his sad companions place with tears collected in the golden vase the sacred relics to the tent they bore the urn a veil of linen covered o'er that done they bid the sepulchre aspire and cast the deep foundations round the pyre high in the midst they heap the swelling bed of rising earth memorial of the dead the swarming populace the chief detains and leads amidst a wide extent of plains there placed them round then from the ships proceeds a train of oxen mules and stately steeds vases and tripods for the funeral games resplendent brass and more resplendent dames first stood the prizes to reward the force of rapid racers in the dusty course a woman for the first in beauty's bloom skilled in the needle and the labouring loom and a large vase where two bright handles rise of twenty measures its capacious size the second victor claims a mare unbroke big with a mule unknowing of the yoke the third a charger yet untouched by flame four ample measures held the shining frame two golden talents for the fourth were placed an ample double bowl contents the last these in fair order ranged upon the plain the hero rising thus addressed the train behold the prizes valiant greeks decreed to the brave rulers of the racing steed prizes which none beside ourself could gain should our immortal coursers take the plain a race unrivalled which from ocean's god peleus received and on his son bestowed but this no time our vigour to display nor suit with them the games of this sad day lost is patroclus now that wont to deck their flowing manes and sleek their glossy neck sad as they shared in human grief they stand and trail those graceful honours on the sand let others for the noble task prepare who trust the courser and the flying car fired at his word the rival racers rise but for the first eumelus hopes the prize famed through pieria for the fleetest breed and skilled to manage the high bounding steed with equal ardour bold Tydides swelled the steeds of trolls beneath his yoke compelled which late obeyed the dardan chief's command when scarce a god redeemed him from his hand then menelaus his pudargis brings and the famed courser of the king of kings whom rich ecapolis more rich than brave to scape the wars to agamemnon gave athe her name at home to end his days base wealth preferring to eternal praise next him antilochus demands the course with beating heart and cheers his pylian horse experienced nestor gives his son the reins directs his judgment and his heat restrains nor idly warns the hoary sire nor hears the prudent son with unattending ears my son though youthful ardour fire thy breast 
the gods have loved thee and with arts have blessed neptune and jove on thee conferred the skill swift round the goal to turn the flying wheel to guide thy conduct little precept needs but slow and past their vigour are my steeds fear not thy rivals though for swiftness known compare those rivals judgment and thy own it is not strength but art obtains the prize and to be swift is less than to be wise tis more by art than force of numerous strokes the dexterous woodman shapes the stubborn oaks by art the pilot through the boiling deep and howling tempest steers the fearless ship and tis the artist wins the glorious course not those who trust in chariots and in horse in vain unskilful to the goal they strive and short or wide the ungoverned courser drive while with sure skill though with inferior steeds the knowing racer to his end proceeds fixed on the goal his eye foreruns the course his hand unerring steers the steady horse and now contracts or now extends the rein observing still the foremost on the plain mark then the goal tis easy to be found yon aged trunk a cubit from the ground of some once stately oak the last remains or hardy fir unperished with the rains enclosed with stones conspicuous from afar and round a circle for the wheeling car some tomb perhaps of old the dead to grace or then as now the limit of a race bear close to this and warily proceed a little bending to the left-hand steed but urge the right and give him all the reins while thy strict hand his fellow's head restrains and turns him short till doubling as they roll the wheels round knaves appear to brush the goal yet not to break the car or lame the horse clear of the stony heap direct the course lest through incaution failing thou mayst be a joy to others a reproach to me so shalt thou pass the goal secure of mind and leave unskilful swiftness far behind though thy fierce rival drove the matchless steed which bore adrastus of celestial breed or the famed race through all the regions known that whirled the car of proud laomedon thus not unsaid the much advising sage concludes then sat stiff with unwieldy age next bold meriones was seen to rise the last but not least ardent for the prize they mount their seats the lots their place dispose rolled in his helmet these achilles throws young nestor leads the race eumelus then and next the brother of the king of men thy lot meriones the fourth was cast and far the bravest diomede was last they stand in order an impatient train polites points the barrier on the plain and sends before old phoenix to the place to mark the racers and to judge the race at once the coursers from the barrier bound the lifted scourges all at once resound their heart their eyes their voice they send before and up the champagne thunder from the shore thick where they drive the dusty clouds arise and the lost courser in the whirlwind flies loose on their shoulders the long manes reclined float in their speed and dance upon the wind the smoking chariots rapid as they bound now seem to touch the sky and now the ground while hot for fame and conquest all their care each o'er his flying courser hung in air erect with ardour poised upon the rein they pant they stretch they shout along the plain now the last compass fetched around the goal at the near prize each gathers all his soul each burns with double hope with double pain tears up the shore and thunders toward the main first flew eumelus on phoretian steeds with those of trolls bold diomede succeeds close on eumelus back they puff the wind and seem just mounting on his car behind full on his neck he feels the sultry breeze and hovering o'er their stretching shadows sees then had he lost or left a doubtful prize but angry phoebus to tydides flies strikes from his hand the scourge and renders vain his matchless horse's labour on the plain rage fills his eye with anguish to survey snatched from his hope the glories of the day the fraud celestial palace sees with pain springs to her knight and gives the scourge again and fills his steeds with vigour at a stroke she breaks his rival's chariot from the yoke no more their way the startled horses held the car reversed came rattling on the field shot headlong from his seat beside the wheel prone on the dust the unhappy master fell his battered face and elbows strike the ground nose mouth and front one undistinguished wound 
grief stops his voice a torrent drowns his eyes before him far the glad tydides flies minerva's spirit drives his matchless pace and crowns him victor of the laboured race the next though distant menelaus succeeds while thus young nestor animates his steeds now now my generous pair exert your force not that we hope to match tydides horse since great minerva wings their rapid way and gives their lord the honours of the day but reach atrides shall his mare outgo your swiftness vanquished by a female foe through your neglect if lagging on the plain the last ignoble gift be all we gain no more shall nestor's hand your food supply the old man's fury rises and ye die haste then yon narrow road before our sight presents the occasion could we use it right thus he the coursers at their master's threat with quicker steps the sounding champagne beat and now antilochus with nice survey observes the compass of the hollow way twas where by force of wintry torrents torn fast by the road a precipice was worn here where but one could pass to shun the throng the spartan hero's chariot smoked along close up the venturous youth resolves to keep still edging near and bears him toward the steep atrides trembling casts his eye below and wonders at the rashness of his foe hold stay your steeds what madness thus to ride this narrow way take larger field he cried or both must fall atrides cried in vain he flies more fast and throws up all the rain far as an able arm the disc can send when youthful rivals their full force extend so far antilochus thy chariot flew before the king he cautious backward drew his horse compelled foreboding in his fears the rattling ruin of the clashing cars the floundering coursers rolling on the plain and conquests lost through frantic haste to gain but thus upbraids his rival as he flies go furious youth ungenerous and unwise go but expect not i'll the prize resign add perjury to fraud and make it thine then to his steeds with all his force he cries be swift be vigorous and regain the prize your rivals destitute of youthful force with fainting knees shall labour in the course and yield the glory yours the steeds obey already at their heels they wing their way and seem already to retrieve the day meantime the grecians in a ring beheld the coursers bounding o'er the dusty field the first who marked them was the cretan king high on a rising ground above the ring the monarch sat from whence with sure survey he well observed the chief who led the way and heard from far his animating cries and saw the foremost steed with sharpened eyes on whose broad front a blaze of shining white like the full moon stood obvious to the sight he saw and rising to the greeks begun are yonder horse discerned by me alone or can ye all another chief survey and other steeds then lately led the way those though the swiftest by some god withheld lie sure disabled in the middle field for since the goal they doubled round the plain i search to find them but i search in vain perchance the reins forsook the driver's hand and turned too short he tumbled on the strand shot from the chariot while his coursers stray with frantic fury from the destined way rise then some other and inform my sight for these dim eyes perhaps discern not right yet sure he seems to judge by shape and air the great aetolian chief renowned in war old man o ilius rashly thus replies thy tongue too hastily confers the prize of those who view the course nor sharpest eyed nor youngest yet the readiest to decide eumelus steeds high bounding in the chase still as at first unrivalled lead the race i well discern him as he shakes the rein and hear his shouts victorious o'er the plain thus he idomeneus incensed rejoined barbarous of words and arrogant of mind contentious prince of all the greeks beside the last in merit as the first in pride to vile reproach what answer can we make a goblet or a tripod let us stake and be the king the judge the most unwise will learn their rashness when they pay the price he said and ajax by mad passion born stern had replied fierce scorn enhancing scorn to fell extremes but thetis godlike son awful amidst them rose and thus begun forbear ye chiefs reproachful to contend much would ye blame should others thus offend 
and lo the approaching steeds your contest end no sooner had he spoke but thundering near drives through a stream of dust the charioteer high o'er his head the circling lash he wields his bounding horses scarcely touch the fields his car amidst the dusty whirlwind rolled bright with the mingled blaze of tin and gold refulgent through the cloud no eye could find the track his flying wheels had left behind and the fierce coursers urged their rapid pace so swift it seemed a flight and not a race now victor at the goal tydides stands quits his bright car and springs upon the sands from the hot steeds the sweaty torrents stream the well-plied whip is hung athwart the beam with joy brave sthenelus receives the prize the tripod vase and dame with radiant eyes these to the ships his train triumphant leads the chief himself unyokes the panting steeds young nestor follows who by art not force or past atrides second in the course behind atrides urged the race more near than to the courser in his swift career the following car just touching with his heel and brushing with his tail the whirling wheel such and so narrow now the space between the rivals late so distant on the green so soon swift athe her lost ground regained one length one moment had the race obtained merion pursued at greater distance still with tardier coursers and inferior skill last came admetus thy unhappy son slow dragged the steeds his battered chariot on achilles saw and pitying thus begun behold the man whose matchless art surpassed the sons of greece the ablest yet the last fortune denies but justice bids us pay since great tydides bears the first away to him the second honours of the day the greeks consent with loud applauding cries and then eumelus had received the prize but youthful nestor jealous of his fame the award opposes and asserts his claim think not he cries i tamely will resign o peleus son the mare so justly mine what if the gods the skilful to confound have thrown the horse and horsemen to the ground perhaps he sought not heaven by sacrifice and vows omitted forfeited the prize if yet distinction to thy friend to show and please a soul desirous to bestow some gift must grace eumelus view thy store of beauteous handmaids steeds and shining ore an ample present let him thence receive and greece shall praise thy generous thirst to give but this my prize i never shall forego this who but touches warriors is my foe thus spake the youth nor did his words offend pleased with the well-turned flattery of a friend achilles smiled the gift proposed he cried antilochus we shall ourselves provide with plates of brass the corslet covered o'er the same renowned asteropeus wore whose glittering margins raised with silver shine no vulgar gift eumelus shall be thine he said automedon at his command the corslet brought and gave it to his hand distinguished by his friend his bosom glows with generous joy then menelaus rose the herald placed the sceptre in his hands and stilled the clamour of the shouting bands not without cause incensed at nestor's son and inly grieving thus the king begun the praise of wisdom in thy youth obtained an act so rash antilochus has stained robbed of my glory and my just reward to you o grecians be my wrong declared so not a leader shall our conduct blame or judge me envious of a rival's fame but shall not we ourselves the truth maintain what needs appealing in a fact so plain what greek shall blame me if i bid thee rise and vindicate by oath the ill-gotten prize rise if thou darest before thy chariot stand the driving scourge high lifted in thy hand and touch thy steeds and swear thy whole intent was but to conquer not to circumvent swear by that god whose liquid arms surround the globe and whose dread earthquakes heave the ground the prudent chief with calm attention heard then mildly thus excuse if youth have erred superior as thou art forgive the offence nor i thy equal or in years or sense thou know'st the errors of unripened age weak are its counsels headlong is its rage the prize i quit if thou thy wrath resign the mare or aught thou asked be freely thine ere i become from thy dear friendship torn hateful to thee and to the gods forsworn so spoke antilochus and at the word the mare contested to the king restored 
joy swells his soul as when the vernal grain lifts the green ear above the springing plain the fields their vegetable life renew and laugh and glitter with the morning dew such joy the spartan's shining face o'erspread and lifted his gay heart while thus he said still may our souls o generous youth agree tis now atrides turn to yield to thee rash heat perhaps a moment might control not break the settled temper of thy soul not but my friend tis still the wiser way to waive contention with superior sway for ah how few who should like thee offend like thee have talents to regain the friend to plead indulgence and thy fault atone suffice thy father's merit and thy own generous alike for me the sire and son have greatly suffered and have greatly done i yield that all may know my soul can bend nor is my pride preferred before my friend he said and pleased his passion to command resigned the courser to noemon's hand friend of the youthful chief himself content the shining charger to his vessel sent the golden talents merion next obtained the fifth reward the double bowl remained achilles this to reverend nestor bears and thus the purpose of his gift declares accept thou this o sacred sire he said in dear memorial of patroclus dead dead and for ever lost patroclus lies for ever snatched from our desiring eyes take thou this token of a grateful heart though tis not thine to hurl the distant dart the quite to toss the ponderous mace to wield or urge the race or wrestle on the field thy pristine vigour age has overthrown but left the glory of the past thy own he said and placed the goblet at his side with joy the venerable king replied wisely and well my son thy words have proved a senior honoured and a friend beloved too true it is deserted of my strength these withered arms and limbs have failed at length oh had i now that force i felt of yore known through buprasium and the pylian shore victorious then in every solemn game ordained to amarynce's mighty name the brave epeans gave my glory way aetolians pylians all resigned the day i quelled clytomedes in fights of hand and backward hurled ancaeus on the sand surpassed iphiclus in the swift career phileus and polydorus with the spear the sons of actor won the prize of horse but won by numbers not by art or force for the famed twins impatient to survey prize after prize by nestor borne away sprung to their car and with united pains one lashed the coursers while one ruled the reins such once i was now to these tasks succeeds a younger race that emulate our deeds i yield alas to age who must not yield though once the foremost hero of the field go thou my son by generous friendship led with martial honours decorate the dead while pleased i take the gift thy hands present pledge of benevolence and kind intent rejoiced of all the numerous greeks to see not one but honours sacred age and me those due distinctions thou so well canst pay may the just gods return another day proud of the gift thus spake the full of days achilles heard him prouder of the praise the prizes next are ordered to the field for the bold champions who the cestus wield a stately mule as yet by toils unbroke of six years age unconscious of the yoke is to the circus led and firmly bound next stands a goblet massy large and round achilles rising thus let greek excite two heroes equal to this hardy fight who dare the foe with lifted arms provoke and rush beneath the long descending stroke on whom apollo shall the palm bestow and whom the greeks supreme by conquest know this mule his dauntless labour shall repay the vanquished bear the massy bowl away this dreadful combat great epeus chose high o'er the crowd enormous bulk he rose and seized the beast and thus began to say stand forth some man to bear the bowl away price of his ruin for who dares deny this mule my right the undoubted victor i others tis owned in fields of battle shine but the first honours of this fight are mine for who excels in all then let my foe draw near but first his certain fortune know secure this hand shall his whole frame confound mash all his bones and all his body pound so let his friends be nigh a needful train to heave the battered carcass off the plain the giant spoke and in a stupid gaze the host beheld him silent with amaze 
twas thou euryalus who durst aspire to meet his might and emulate thy sire the great mecistius who in days of yore in theban games the noblest trophy bore the games ordained dead oedipus to grace and singly vanquish the cadmian race him great tydides urges to contend warm with the hopes of conquest for his friend officious with the cincture girds him round and to his wrist the gloves of death are bound amid the circle now each champion stands and poises high in air his iron hands with clashing gauntlets now they fiercely close their crackling jaws re-echo to the blows and painful sweat from all their members flows at length epeus dealt a weighty blow full on the cheek of his unwary foe beneath that ponderous arm's resistless sway down dropped he nerveless and extended lay as a large fish when winds and waters roar by some huge billow dashed against the shore lies panting not less battered with his wound the bleeding hero pants upon the ground to rear his fallen foe the victor lends scornful his hand and gives him to his friends whose arms support him reeling through the throng and dragging his disabled legs along nodding his head hangs down his shoulder o'er his mouth and nostrils pour the clotted gore wrapped round in mists he lies and lost to thought his friends receive the bowl too dearly bought the third bold game achilles next demands and calls the wrestlers to the level sands a massy tripod for the victor lies of twice six oxen its reputed price and next the loser's spirits to restore a female captive valued but at four scarce did the chief the vigorous strife propose when tower-like ajax and ulysses rose amid the ring each nervous rival stands embracing rigid with implicit hands close locked above their heads and arms are mixed below their planted feet at distance fixed like two strong rafters which the builder forms proof to the wintry winds and howling storms their tops connected but at wider space fixed on the centre stands their solid base now to the grasp each manly body bends the humid sweat from every pore descends their bones resound with blows sides shoulders thighs swell to each gripe and bloody tumours rise nor could ulysses for his art renowned or turn the strength of ajax on the ground nor could the strength of ajax overthrow the watchful caution of his artful foe while the long strife even tired the lookers-on thus to ulysses spoke great telamon or let me lift thee chief or lift thou me prove we our force and jove the rest decree he said and straining heaved him off the ground with matchless strength that time ulysses found the strength to evade and where the nerves combine his ankle struck the giant fell supine ulysses following on his bosom lies shouts of applause run rattling through the skies ajax to lift ulysses next essays he barely stirred him but he could not raise his knee locked fast the foe's attempt denied and grappling close they tumbled side by side defiled with honourable dust they roll still breathing strife and unsubdued of soul again they rage again to combat rise when great achilles thus divides the prize your noble vigour o my friends restrain nor weary out your generous strength in vain ye both have won let others who excel now prove that prowess you have proved so well the hero's words the willing chiefs obey from their tired bodies wipe the dust away and clothed anew the following games survey and now succeed the gifts ordained to grace the youths contending in the rapid race a silver urn that full six measures held by none in weight or workmanship excelled sidonian artists taught the frame to shine elaborate with artifice divine whence tyrian sailors did the prize transport and gave to thoas at the lemnian port from him descended good Eunius heired the glorious gift and for lycaon spared to brave patroclus gave the rich reward now the same hero's funeral rites to grace it stands the prize of swiftness in the race a well-fed ox was for the second placed and half a talent must content the last achilles rising then bespoke the train who hope the palm of swiftness to obtain stand forth and bear these prizes from the plain the hero said and starting from his place oilean ajax rises to the race ulysses next and he whose speed surpassed his youthful equals nestor's son the last ranged in a line the ready racers stand pelides points the barrier with his hand all start at once 
o ilius led the race the next ulysses measuring pace with pace behind him diligently close he sped as closely following as the running thread the spindle follows and displays the charms of the fair spinster's breast and moving arms graceful in motion thus his foe he plies and treads each footstep ere the dust can rise his glowing breath upon his shoulders plays the admiring greeks loud acclamations raise to him they give their wishes hearts and eyes and send their souls before him as he flies now three times turned in prospect of the goal the panting chief to pallas lifts his soul assist o goddess thus in thought he prayed and present at his thought descends the maid buoyed by her heavenly force he seems to swim and feels a pinion lifting every limb all fierce and ready now the prize to gain unhappy ajax stumbles on the plain or turned by pallas where the slippery shore was clogged with slimy dung and mingled gore the selfsame place beside patroclus pyre where late the slaughtered victims fed the fire besmeared with filth and blotted o'er with clay obscene to sight the rueful racer lay the well-fed bull the second prize he shared and left the urn ulysses rich reward then grasping by the horn the mighty beast the baffled hero thus the greeks addressed accursed fate the conquest i forego a mortal i a goddess was my foe she urged her favourite on the rapid way and pallas not ulysses won the day thus sourly wailed he sputtering dirt and gore a burst of laughter echoed through the shore antilochus more humorous than the rest takes the last prize and takes it with a jest why with our wiser elders should we strive the gods still love them and they always thrive ye see to ajax i must yield the prize he to ulysses still more aged and wise a green old age unconscious of decays that proves the hero born in better days behold his vigour in this act of race achilles only boasts a swifter pace for who can match achilles he who can must yet be more than hero more than man the effect succeeds the speech pelides cries thy artful praise deserves a better prize nor greece in vain shall hear thy friend extolled receive a talent of the purest gold the youth departs content the host admire the son of nestor worthy of his sire next these a buckler spear and helm he brings cast on the plain the brazen burden rings arms which of late divine sarpedon wore and great patroclus in short triumph bore stand forth the bravest of our host he cries whoever dares deserve so rich a prize now grace the lists before our army's sight and sheathed in steel provoke his foe to fight who first the jointed armour shall explore and stain his rival's mail with issuing gore the sword astropius possessed of old a thracian blade distinct with studs of gold shall pay the stroke and grace the striker's side these arms in common let the chiefs divide for each brave champion when the combat ends a sumptuous banquet at our tents attends fierce at the word uprose great tydeus son and the huge bulk of ajax telamon clad in refulgent steel on either hand the dreadful chiefs amid the circle stand lowering they meet tremendous to the sight each argive bosom beats with fierce delight opposed in arms not long they idly stood but thrice they closed and thrice the charge renewed a furious pass the spear of ajax made through the broad shield but at the corslet stayed not thus the foe his javelin aimed above the buckler's margin at the neck he drove but greece now trembling for her hero's life bade share the honours and surcease the strife yet still the victors due to dides gains with him the sword and studded belt remains then hurled the hero thundering on the ground a mass of iron an enormous round whose weight and size the circling greeks admire rude from the furnace and but shaped by fire this mighty quite eteon wont to rear and from his whirling arm dismiss in air the giant by achilles slain he stowed among his spoils this memorable load for this he bids those nervous artists vie that teach the disc to sound along the sky let him whose might can hurl this bowl arise who farthest hurls it take it as his prize if he be one enriched with large domain of downs for flocks and arable for grain small stock of iron needs that man provide his hinds and swains whole years shall be supplied from hence nor ask the neighbouring city's aid for ploughshares wheels and all the rural trade 
stern polypetes stepped before the throng and great leontius more than mortal strong whose force with rival forces to oppose uprose great ajax up epeus rose each stood in order first epeus threw high o'er the wondering crowds the whirling circle flew leontius next a little space surpassed and third the strength of godlike ajax cast o'er both their marks it flew till fiercely flung from polypedes arm the discus sung far as a swain his whirling sheep hook throws that distant falls among the grazing cows so past them all the rapid circle flies his friends while loud applauses shake the skies with force conjoined heave off the weighty prize those who in skilful archery contend he next invites the twanging bow to bend and twice ten axes casts amidst the round ten double-edged and ten that singly wound the mast which late a first-rate galley bore the hero fixes in the sandy shore to the tall top a milk-white dove they tie the trembling mark at which their arrows fly whose weapon strikes yon fluttering bird shall bear these two-edged axes terrible in war the single he whose shaft divides the cord he said experienced merion took the word and skilful teucer in the helm they threw their lots inscribed and forth the latter flew swift from the string the sounding arrow flies but flies unblessed no grateful sacrifice no firstling lambs unheedful didst thou vow to phoebus patron of the shaft and bow for this thy well-aimed arrow turned aside urge from the dove yet cut the cord that tied adown the mainmast fell the parted string and the free bird to heaven displays her wing sea shores and skies with loud applause resound and merion eager meditates the wound he takes the bow directs the shaft above and following with his eye the soaring dove implores the god to speed it through the skies with vows of firstling lambs and grateful sacrifice the dove in airy circles as she wheels amid the clouds the piercing arrow feels quite through and through the point its passage found and at his feet fell bloody to the ground the wounded bird ere yet she breathed her last with flagging wings alighted on the mast a moment hung and spread her pinions there then sudden dropped and left her life in air from the pleased crowd new peals of thunder rise and to the ship's brave merion bears the prize to close the funeral games achilles last a massy spear amid the circle placed and ample charger of unsullied frame with flowers high wrought not blackened yet by flame for these he bids the heroes prove their art whose dexterous skill directs the flying dart here too great merion hopes the noble prize nor here disdained the king of men to rise with joy polites saw the honour paid rose to the monarch and respectful said thee first in virtue as in power supreme o king of nations all thy greeks proclaim in every martial game thy worth attest and know thee both their greatest and their best take then the prize but let brave merion bear this beamy javelin in thy brother's war pleased from the hero's lips his praise to hear the king to merion gives the brazen spear but set apart for sacred use commands the glittering charger to talthebius hands End of book twenty three.